Welcome everyone as we gather together for our online Sunday worship service for July 19th, 2020. Let us begin this service with a word of prayer. Dear Lord Father God, we thank you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing and all that you have yet to do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you have given to us so that we may be called your sons and daughters, that we may call upon you, Abba, Father. Be with us during this time of worship today as we lift up your holy name. We pray together in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. Hear now the word of the Lord. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. The word of the Lord. Truly thanks be to God, Thanks to all of you. It is good, finally, to be back worshiping again with my Awake Ministries family. As you may notice, I am filming from the same place as my last sermon. I am still here in New York. I will be leaving First Hole next week. And I want to thank you all for all of your prayers, all of your concern, all of your thoughts for my mother. She is still in the hospital. Uh, but just thank you so much for all of the outpouring of support that I have received over these past weeks through messages and phone calls. And being here in New York, in America, unexpectedly, I did not plan to be here, but being here unexpectedly, I was able to celebrate the most important holiday of the American year, of course, after Christmas. And this important day is Independence Day on July 4th. Now, if you want to know how Americans celebrate Independence Day, I'll tell you the secret. It is not very complicated at all. What they do is they get together with family and friends, they eat way too much food, and then they shoot fireworks at night. That's all they do. But as simple as that may seem, these are very important traditions for Americans to keep because Americans very fiercely value their independence. They love being independent and free, sometimes even to unhealthy extremes. 
in the midst of this pandemic. I've seen way too many videos of people refusing to wear masks in public. I have even seen some examples in person myself since arriving here in New York. People who walk around boldly, unashamedly, refusing to wear a mask. And these people will get angry and they will even get violent if people ask them to put on a mask because they are independent. You know, independence is certainly important for many countries. America gaining its independence from Imperial Britain, Korea regaining its independence from Imperial Japan, and countless other examples around the world of countries who value their independence. But what is independence? What is freedom? It is not a virtue that should be pursued above all other things, especially if we pursue it at the expense of others. And so Paul writes to the Corinthian church and to all of us today to tell us about a different model of living, living not independently, but inter dependently, not celebrating independence from each other, but celebrating our interdependence, the fact that we do depend on each other. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. A body cannot function when one of its parts is damaged, when one of its parts is malfunctioning. For the health of the whole body, the health of one part is very important. Now, I always knew the biblical truth of what Paul was saying here, this message. And in school, I had learned the scientific reality of how God has designed the human body, the physical human body. But I did not truly understand this fact, this truth, until very recently just how important one part of the human body truly is. As you all know, my mother has been very sick, which is why I have extended my time here in New York. She was first diagnosed with autoimmune encephalopathy, which means that her immune system was attacking her own brain. As a result, she was getting fevers every single day, getting as high as 104 degrees Fahrenheit. And when these fevers came, my mother would have all these different symptoms. She would have memory loss. She would have speech and movement problems. She wouldn't be able to speak properly. She wasn't able to even pick up a spoon or to use her phone. And she would even have seizures. Now, because of the coronavirus pandemic, the hospital only allows one visitor per day, but almost every day I would go to visit her. But some days were very bad. Some days she didn't recognize who I was, her own son. She thought I was a hospital employee. And it broke my heart when she asked me to go and find her son, to ask her son to come to the room. Other days, she couldn't even lift her hand. I had to spoon feed her, spoon feed her like a newborn baby. And at other times, she would open her, her eyes, she would be awake, but I could see that she was not there. The person was not there. And she would just speak nonsense. Having a fever for just one day is hard enough, but she had been like this for over a month growing weaker and weaker every single day. It was so difficult seeing her like this. At one point, our family agreed that we may need to start preparing ourselves emotionally. We might need to start preparing for the possibility that we would lose her, my mother, that we would lose her forever, whether to death or just her mental state never fully returned. And throughout all this time, the doctors could not figure out what was causing all of this to happen. 
you know, it's a very scary thing for the doctors to be just as confused and desperate as you are. Because doctors are supposed to be the ones that know what we do not know through their education, through their experience. They're supposed to know what we don't know. Through their treatments, through their medicines, they are able to control or should be able to control what we cannot control. But I realized through this experience that truly only God knows. Truly only God is in control. Finally, they found out that she has lymphoma in her bone marrow. And as shocked as our family was to hear that it was cancer, it was also a relief to finally have an answer. And even the doctors were relieved to finally find the reason. It was amazing because when the doctors came to give me the news, a team of eight different doctors from all different departments came to see me. A doctor from oncology, a doctor from hematology, a doctor from neurology, a doctor from endocrinology. I learned so many different ology names this time at the hospital and other departments I can't even remember. They all came as a group together to let me know what they had found. Because my mother's case had become such a top priority at this hospital because it was such a mystery. And they had all these different departments working together on this case. And even they were so excited that they had finally found an answer. She has now started chemotherapy the very next day, and we are already seeing great improvements in her condition. We are seeing her finally getting better. And again, I want to say thank you to all the Awake Ministries family, especially to Pastor Emeritus and to Senior Pastor uh, for all of the prayers, all of the understanding during this difficult time. But truly, it is amazing that just one part of my mother's body malfunctioning, just one part of my mother's body not being well, could cause all of these terrible symptoms, that it could affect the entire body in such a way. Paul wants us to remember the value of each and every part of the body. He tells us God has put this body together. God has put this body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Because if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And that is the truth of Christian living. If one of us suffers, if one of us fails, all of us share in that failure and that suffering with him together. If one of us succeeds, if one of us thrives, then we can all share in that joy together with her. We as Christians are not isolated. We are not independent pockets of self, unconcerned with the other. We have this deep and unbreakable connection with the brothers and sisters of Christ that God has placed around us. God has placed them, each one of them, as he sees fit, as he wants. Truly, we depend on one another. That is why Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, he tells us, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. No matter what personal achievement or glory we may have attained, it doesn't mean anything outside of that body where we depend on one another. No matter what personal achievement or glory we may have achieved, it does not mean anything outside of the body. If I make a large salary, but I have no concern for the financially needy, I have earned nothing. If I have advanced academic degrees, but I look down on those who have not studied as much as I have, I have learned nothing. If I have great physical health, but I take no time to visit the sick, to care for the suffering, then I have not truly lived my life. If I become holy, a devout Christian, 
but I have no room in my life for anyone that is unlike me, then I have done nothing with my faith. We must always be concerned. We must always be on guard for the rest of the body. Because what is good for them is good for me. And what is bad for them is bad for me. It's not enough just for me to succeed, for me to do well, for me to be satisfied, for me to go to bed with a full stomach and a content heart. We must be concerned with others. We are one body with many parts. And when one part, when just one part is hurting, it affects all of the other parts as well. It reminds me of the story of the horse and the donkey. As it goes, there was a farmer who took his goods to town to sell. And when he went, the farmer would heap the entire load upon the donkey. And then he would ride upon the horse. And every day the donkey would beg, beg of the horse, please, please take some of my burden. Help me. I am suffering. And to this, the horse would turn up his nose and proudly say, I am not made for such low and burdensome tasks. That is beneath me. That is your work, donkey. And the horse would trot away proudly. Well, on one especially hot day, the donkey once again begged the horse for help, but the horse once again refused. And as they were walking along the road, the donkey collapsed, exhausted. The farmer immediately jumped off of his horse to attend to his fallen donkey. And seeing that the heat had overwhelmed the donkey and that it needed water, the story says, the farmer put the entire load that the donkey had been carrying upon the horse's back. And then he put the donkey on the horse's back as well and forced it to carry all the load, including the donkey. What the horse had believed to be the problem of the donkey, not my problem, turned out to be his own problem in the end. You see, friends, none of us are in this faith journey on our own. Let us always be aware of the rest of the body, the other parts of the body that are in together with us, and let us care for them as we would care for ourselves. When they are suffering, it must truly affect us in our hearts as well. When they are doing well, when they are seeing success, We can feel genuine joy for that success because we are one body. We may be many different parts, but we are united as one through Jesus Christ. So having equal concern for one another, let us live as the members of this body of Christ. Let us pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have knitted us together in one heart, in one banner, in one body, under this common banner of your Son, Jesus Christ. Let us love the other parts of the body as we would love ourselves. Let us care for them as we would care for ourselves, O Lord. In doing this, we know that we bring you honor and that we make you glad. We pray all of this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Just a couple of announcements. As we have been saying, uh, the Korean ministry, KM, has opened. Uh, Of course, we are maintaining safe social distancing and safe practices. Uh, The departmental services are not yet open. So, again, we will work on getting that back open as soon as possible, as soon as it is safe. And we will keep you posted. But until then, please continue joining in on our online worship services. And, of course, all of our education departments Uh, from Paideon, Hosanna, Shalom, Jesus Generation. All of them are online as well. So please have your children and your students uh, participate in those online worships. Also, please continue praying for our church, for our senior pastor, our pastor emeritus, for all of our elders, uh, all of our leadership as they uh, display wisdom and godly leadership through this difficult time. And also, as many of you have heard this past week, 
uh, Elder Kim Daewon, Kim Daewon Changnonim, uh, who served our department so faithfully last year, uh, passed away this past week. Uh, I'm sure that many of you have sent your condolences and well wishes, uh, but he, please continue praying for his family that they would have peace during this time. Now let us conclude our worship service today with the benediction. Let us pray. And now we pray, O Lord, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose body is made up of many different parts, and the love of the Almighty Father God who has brought this body together, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who knits us together in fellowship, be with the members of our Awake Ministries and Myeongsong Church now and forever. Amen.